Hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you tonight? Tonight, I thought we would have a look at this, a Dyson DC25. This particular model is the animal version. There were many DC25s. It was one of the more common Dysons in their run. There were, I don't know how many models there were, but from about 2008 until 2012, I've been reliably informed, they became the base Dyson model replacing the DC07. This is what would be called a first generation ball, along with the DC24 and DC15, although it shares nothing in comparison with the DC15. Completely different. I have this one in for a full refurb, so I thought I would show you the full refurb. Notice there's a couple of bits missing. First off is the hose. I've already washed the hose. Second is the hose that sits here and in here because they've been washed as well. And also in the cyclone we don't have a filter because I washed that as well. So not starting completely from scratch but good enough really. Throughout this video I should be making a screw card. Always make a screw card when you take a machine apart. We have a parts box over here, a parts box for non-washables here, and a selection of tools, which will hopefully be all we need. I'll talk you through those as and when we do them. So, first thing to do, and I'll angle it slightly so you can see, is take the wand off. Obviously on 25. Take the wand off and put it like so. Now you can strip these down completely. I've done a pictorial thread on this on Manchester Vax, but I'm not going to do it here because there is no need. You only strip it down if it doesn't lock. Apart from that, it can be washed whole. You can remove this button here, which we may as well do. You take a small flat blade screwdriver, and there's two pegs, and you just find one of the pegs stick it down the side of it and very carefully leave up the plastic and it will pop off and there's the button. There's also a very small spring there which has a piece of fluff on it. So that's the first part off. You can also take the wand cap off and that simply twists and snaps off and there's your wand end cap. Everything else Leave as it is, there's no point taking it apart unless it is broken. So, that done, bring the machine back and take off the cyclone. And with the cyclone off, we can move on to the switch housing. And I'm going to try and move a little bit closer here, just in case you can see what I'm doing. At the back of the switch housing, there's three screws, two at the top here and one down there. Up a bit, there. I'm doing it back to front. Take your T15, I think it's T15, yes, T15 Torx driver. I know I lie. They're the clips that you need to release. The screws are in there and that one there. So once I stop lying to you, simply unscrew them. I'm doing it off camera. All to me. And they'll fall off into there as it happens. We don't want that. Grab it out with the magnetic screwdriver. And we'll use the magnetic screwdriver for the rest of them. The Um, very quickly, if I can find a pen, do, 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 do. should have got this done before I start the video. We will card them. So, switch housing. One, two, three. One, two, three the start of our screw card. With that removed, 
and with those removed, take your small flat base screwdriver and simply pop out the clips either side and the switch housing comes off. That is what it looks like inside the switch housing. Let's see if I can get that to focus a little bit. There we go. Power button simply lifts out. There we go. Power button lifts out. There we go. And into the parts box. It has a spring that sits under there. And then we can remove the brush roll on off switch, which has this plastic peg and little spring inside it. Simply pull that out. Being careful not to lose the spring, like so. I don't want it to that part. And the now empty switch housing can also go in the parts box. Now here is the switch of a DC25. We have the main power switch, the brush roll on off switch, and the momentary brush roll reset switch. And all you do is pull the whole lot out. One, two, three, like so. With that pulled out, remove the mains cable to give yourself a bit of slack. And as you can see, the whole lot pulls out. The neutral wire, as with most Dysons, is behind a little plastic box. I don't bother washing that. And all the wires unclip by pushing the tab on the spade connector. Spade connectors always have a little tab, don't just go pulling it because you'll rip it off as I have done once before. So, there we go. I need the little wire connecting those to the reset switch and the brush roll and off switch. We don't need to actually remove them. And there we go. Unwired. We'll take the combination tool off next. And it should pull apart. There we go. I'll have to clean that out before we wash it. So I'll pop it down there. But that can go in there. Next, remove your rubber seals. There's one here and one here. They might be glued on. They are sometimes. But you can safely remove them. Good pull. They always clip back on again. So. That is, apart from needing to grab the spiral cable and pull it down, but it'll only pull down so far, that is it for the top part of the chassis. The other bit on the top part of the chassis is this, which is the little clip that clicks the wand in. I have seen those broken. And this, which is the cyclone release catch, but I don't remove those because they could be a right pain. So there we go, top part done. Let me reposition the camera and we'll move on to the bottom. Here we go, here we go. This is where pretty much everything sits on the entire machine. We have the brush roll housing, the motor, and obviously all the wires that run up. We have the changeover valve here, and it's all got to be taken apart. Now this particular machine does have an issue and that the head flops around when it really shouldn't. So we need to look at why that's doing that. I know why. I'll come on to that later, but we need to get there first. The first thing we'll do is take off the brush roll head. And there's a little catch here. You push it down, hold the spring down, and the whole head pulls off. And we'll put that to one side because we should concentrate on this first, and the first thing we need to do is remove these three screws from the main wiring. All the wiring to the motor and the brush roll sits under this cover. So we'll have that off. One, two, three. And we'll card these up. Now, whenever I card up, I look at the front of the machine and obviously left and right. 
So this is the right hand wiring cover. And if you know which way you're looking at the machine, when you write your screw card out, you'll be alright. The reason I recommend using a screw card if you're either stripping a machine down to its component parts just for the crack of it like I am, or doing repair, is that a lot of the screws are different sizes on a 25. And you, well, on quite a lot of Dyson's actually and you could screw yourself over so there is the wiring cover we'll wash that and this is where all the wiring runs down on a 25 so that is the brush roll switch so when the machine is declined which it won't fully do at the minute there's a little bit on here that pushes down on that switch and then we have the wires for that running around these are the main power neither neutral wires and somewhere in there is also the wire that operates the brush roll on a switch so first thing I do which you can't see is remove the brush roll switch and it just pulls off like so in fact I lied earlier these two spade terminals don't have little clips so you can simply push off the spade connectors and pull it off of the wires. Now inside here, I can show you, angle it so you can see it. There's a little cam and the spring and the switch. The switch just pulls out. There we go, oh, dropped it. And when you push on the little metal lever, I can get it into shot, you can't really see it because I don't own fancy lights. It pushes a switch. Next out is the little cam that sits there like that. I really should have turned the flash on, shouldn't I? And there's a little spring that comes out. So pull the cam out of the machine, it just lifts off as well. Like so. And that is the brush roll on off switch apart. <coughs> Lovely. Right, the next thing to come out is probably going to be the pedals. Um, this always messes me over, especially on 24s, but also on 25. This spring it has to be in a particular orientation. And that particular orientation is it loops around that bit there looks like that and then goes to there it's surprisingly difficult to get that right when you're working on when you're trying to put it back together if we move to the other side there's two screws holding the gray and red pedal on and these two screws have little plastic washers which act as the lock uh, yeah, well like bushes actually, the little plastic bushes. There's a couple of those on this machine. So we'll take them both out initially. There we go. The other one's disappeared. Uh, it's rolled itself over here, which is handy. So we'll card those up in a minute. Then all you simply do is pull, and the whole lot comes off. Don't worry about putting it back together yet. We'll worry about that later. And to get the pedals off, I'll put the back on. They ride, well the red pedal rides inside a groove. So you just simply have to sort of angle it and it falls out. There we go. I have seen before these broken. One or two of the edges snap off and you can buy replacements. What also fell out is this spring there that corresponds to a part on, I think it's on the chassis actually, and that's what makes the red pedal bounce and lock itself up into place. Because what it does is it rides through that groove there and then this is upside down and kicks itself into there which holds the machine up right. Then when you push the pedal down it goes back. And that's what reclines the machine. Here is that spring I was telling you about. The main grey pedal spring. Obviously what makes the pedals flick up 
out of the way. You can leave that on. I'll wash the whole thing. I never take the wheels off. Never seen the point. There we go. And we need to card up the red and grey pedal screw. And I always put on 24s and 25s an asterisk next to the screws that need the plastic bush. Because it is quite hard to forget, especially if it's a couple of days until you put it back together. So always do that. Right. Now we need to unwire the thing. The red pen box. So to unwire a 24, you need your flat blade screwdriver. Quite a sharp, nice flat blade screwdriver. Because you need to flick out the spade terminals, which can be a bit tricky. But once they're unclipped, you can simply remove them very easily and nicely. So there we go, there's one out, there's two out. Clip some. This has been apart before. Well, I know it's been apart before because I've had it apart before. So that's the live and the neutral from the motor unplugged. That's the brown wire for live, which goes to the black wire to the motor and the two white wires connect up. There's also a white cable here for the yoke. And this is the yoke loom neutral. And the yoke loom live doesn't have a connector because obviously it goes to the switch so once you're all unwired and looking good we can undo this screw here and that screw there and release the ball now the left hand ball screw sits in a big plastic bush that's what pivots the ball and that's the left hand ball screw pop and we'll do the same here although this is a different screw but exactly the same crack for the right hand ball screw there we go after that if you pull outwards on the chassis just a little bit the whole lot should fall out because of wire traps there and the ball comes off with the yoke attached pop that to one side and here is the bearer chassis. So, with that all off, we can now remove the rest of the chassis wire. And this is clipped here. There's a phenomenally stiff clip here, which is the last of it. So you pull that up, and you've now got to feed these wires through, which is always fun. But as long as you line up and sort of squeeze it together it, and help it through, it will come out. So there's a the spinal cord. We can put that with the power cord over there. Now, the reason, one of the reasons that this machine has its issues is this has fallen off. This is the black clip that helps, that basically locks the machine upright. And it sits there and has this plastic brush and I'll put it back together so you can see how it works and this screw both of which do fall out I have seen it happen quite a lot and it's happened here as well and I don't think it's any fault of my own and you'll see why in a minute because if I screw that back in there when the ball, when the when everything's fitted and you put the machine upright, it locks itself in. I 
one way or another, that tab there is what locks the yoke in. And if I can try and do it without taking my fingers off, it snaps in and out. The reason that that has probably come apart, and I noticed this the last time I had this machine, didn't think much of it, hoped it would be okay, but it wasn't, is there should be a plastic tab there. That plastic tab there corresponds, I think, does it correspond with anything? I think it does. Doesn't work out what it corresponds to. That's something anyway, because it's missing. Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong place. We need to get the grey pedal out again. Because with the grey pedal in its position, that hole there should go over that tab. And because that tab is snapped off, it can all move. And that's probably what's killed that over time. So we'll have that off. And we'll card that up as ball release peg with an asterisk and pull it off and we'll have the spring off as well which just comes off with a lot of fiddling there it is look we'll wash that why the devil not next we need to do the changeover valve very simple you undo that screw there. Like so. Unlike a 24, it's the same size as all the rest of the screws, which is good. Um, that's the little plastic bush that aids the wheel to rotate. So, will this be the screen change over valve wheel pop and then once you've removed that the wheel simply lifts off and you slide it down until basically it comes off the arm which you might need to just manipulate the valve a little bit for it to come off there we go there is our changeover wheel Lovely. Now we need to undo many screws. Many, many screws under here hold the change over valve assembly onto the machine. There we go. Uh, let's look at it quickly. There's one here. Basically, everywhere you see a silver screw. Can come off. Where else is this one here? This one here. A total of five screws. And once all five screws are removed, the whole changeover valve assembly comes off. This up so change over valve assembly one, two, three, four, five. <coughs> there. Not feeling too well at the minute. I overdid it this week. I drove a lot of miles. I went for a pilgrimage up to Manchester to go to Manchester Vax and to a gig. Did the whole lot in 48 hours. I was shattered. So, not much remaining on here. The only thing we need to do, and there would be a hose attached to this, is the changeover valve itself. Get the diverts the suction. Now, to get the hose off, you simply push it off of that part there. There's even a handy little indentation for you to pop your screwdriver, and it pops off. And to get the rest of it out, you simply line up the tabs with their bigger holes and that pulls out 
there's a bubble seal there that also needs to come out that part is fixed everything else is fixed you can if you wish remove the little clips that hold the small tools in place they simply pop off like so and that's it here's one of my stickers I lasted this on the 23rd of July last year because this is scrap this is a go back on the machine what is going back on the machine if I just take off the piece of paper with my work address on it is this chassis that I got in the post but I've not actually opened yet so open it now we can do a Ivania style live unboxing or live unwrapping anyway bit of fun isn't it? Let's just see the sanitate. I will try and keep the bubble wrap because I need to I, I, I do need some bubble wrap. So we'll try and be a little bit careful. Let's try and reuse these things. Or we can, there's a wall on don't you know. Do, 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 do. I do hope this is okay, otherwise I've well, got to complain and get another one and this machine will have to just sit for ages. But what I wrap this now is I want to wash it, but it's in the second hand part. Nothing on the second hand parts. This cost me seven pounds delivered. Which is entirely reasonable for an entire back chassis. So if you do have a Dyson with the same issue as this go on to eBay and get a spare part. Don't be all snobbish about leaving a brand new genuine Dyson part because you will get fleeced. And there's no need for a genuine Dyson part on well, no need for genuine parts on genuine brand new even I should say. You, I don't think you can get aftermarket chassis. Might be able to. But I don't think so somehow. Not when there's so many machines that get broken the spares. I've broken a fair few DC 25s myself over the years. When the flush roll motor's gone and the main motor's gone and it's just too uneconomical to the Oh, Right, here we go. Same moment, Hoxie. to be a part of scrap. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Oh, war sellotape. I won't be so keen to unpick the bubble up this time, I think. Let's just get in it. Don't want to waste your time watching me very carefully try and save five pence worth of bubble that, do we? Right. Oh, what have we got? Well, first off, of the most reused chassis that I bought, it comes with a lot of stuff that we had to strip off that we either don't need or can reuse. We have a second set of seals. We'll wash those up. I'll, I'll keep all these as spare parts. We have another set of tool clips and I think these fit the 04, the 04, the 07 and yeah so I can use those for DC07s, we'll keep those. Ah, here we have the changeover valve with the hose fitted. So as you can see when you move that cable, the hose box from side to side like that. So when you put the wand in it pushes that flap down which moves the wheel, which moves the, moves the um, suction. 
And it's quite nice to have spare parts actually because quite often they do break. So what's hard to do? I'm not going to bother carding these up because I have all the screws I need. But like I said, I, I will keep these all in my spare stash. Because it's always handy to have a good spare stash. Let's very quickly blitz this apart. One, two, three. Number five again, there it is. Five. There we go. We'll pop those in the box. Because all the ones are left over, I should just put in my box of random spares. So, now we have two changeover valves. Which one's in the better condition? Well, they're both identical. So, because I would have washed this one before, I'll stick with this one. That one can go over there into the spares pile. Oh, I, I can show you how to get this hose off now. Just simply lever it off with the screwdriver and it will let go eventually. Line up the two plastic tabs into their respective holes. You do need to push the changeover valve into its uppermost position to get this tab to line up. And then this not insignificant screwdrivering. No, don't pop back in. Little sod. Off it comes. Or we can take this seal off, this seal off, and that off. And I'll wash my hose. The hose does split, so that's be quite handy to have. And here, and this is what I was fearing the most, that is where that plastic peg should sit. So, I'm glad about that, because that means that that's a good chassis. The clip is working well. We can call that job done. And I'll put the other one in the bin. So, let's move on to the changeover valve. There's not a lot that you actually need to do on this. But because I'm filming this, I'll show you how to strip it down because there is literally only one thing to do and that is remove this screw. It is not imperative, but in case it helps anybody because theirs is buggered. Let's do this anyway. It comes out with this little plastic bush. So, change over flap. After mix. Then, you need to gently flip up, gently flip up, come on, gently flip up your sod. Oh no you don't, I'm being silly, you need to push out the middle bit. There we go, let's push out the middle bit. That is what holds it all together. And now technically my screwdriver is acting as that pivot. If I take that out, this spring falls out. Never do this on a 24 because it's just an absolute sod to get back together. The main flap comes off, and you can remove. You no, know, don't remove this seal because that seal is glued on. And from my memory serves me correctly, it's an absolute bastard to put back on. So leave that, you've got to clean that in situ. And that is it, that is the changeover valve as a part as it will go on a 25 lovely jubbly so we shall put a line under our screw card and that is all the screws so far just to get the chassis stripped we now have bits and the bits that we shall start with is the motor um, initially you just pull either side of the yoke one side will give first and then let it go we'll put the motor over there and start with the yoke. Now the first thing to fall off will be the little tray that holds the wires. Now this is the yoke lube and if you have an intermittent brush roll, i.e. depending on where you move the machine, 
it turns on and off, this wire will be snapped. The kit is very, very cheap. I have done a how-to guide on the Manchester Vax forum, should you require it. So to take this off, can't remember to start now, we'll start with the actual, th that's the, that's the cover that hides the wiring and there's three screws, two on the top, one on the bottom. So we'll take these out. He says, one, two, three. And then I think you just pull and it should give up in the end. There we go. It also brings out the plug. Now you can strip this down and wash it. You flick out those two tabs there and pull the wires out. I'm not going to bother, I'll be honest. And the kit, should you buy the kit, is that. That is, I've got one in the shed. That's the whole kit. It just plugs in. So I'm not gonna wash that today because we don't need to. I need to card up these screws. So yoke wiring cover. One, ah, done too big hole. One, two, three. Oh, we've got to be careful of that. One, two, three. Next to this bar, and this bar is what stops the head from flopping about. Because when it's on, and it's on the machine, it pushes that up, which then locks that in, and stops it from fully spinning around. And there's one screw holding that in, which sits in there. Like so. And then it falls off, basically. There's another little bush there that comes off. And a spring there which causes it to bounce. So one, two, three. And that doesn't come apart anymore either. So there is the yoke for a DC25. Oh, with the motor. And all you have to do, oh, we haven't carded up the yoke lock bar screw. Always card up as you go along. The amount of times I've forgotten, done a few steps, and then had a big pile of screws to work out what goes where. It's not even funny. Four screws here, which releases the ball. One, two, three, and four. says if he can locate the head. Ooh, uh. Ooh, uh. And the ball simply lifts apart Ooh. and the motor housing falls out. You can then, we can done this first, take off the filter cover. But you don't have to. It's up to you. So that is the ball. Pop, pop and pop. Now I'm hoping that the filter isn't too bad because I've never put brand new filters in this. I know it has been used a fair bit for DIY and um, I have actually checked it to see if the brush roll works. We'll worry about that later, it's only the others. Yes, there we go. July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. So nine months of use. I've seen that, that's not too bad. It's probably going to be a bit of dust in it because you can tell, but none's coming out. That'll be perfectly fine to reuse. However, were you doing this properly, you would get a new filter. 
the two bearings pull out now, and unlike a 24, the 25 has a much more robust small bearing. I've never known those to wear out. And it uses the same style of bearing as a 24, which you can pull apart which, like so. The outer bit pops out. And then the inner race comes out and all this little ball bearing stay attached and you can grease that. You put a lovely big fat smear of grease, which I'll do when we reassemble this, around it. And that shuts it up. This one's a little bit noisy. I have seen worse though. There's a not very smelly air freshener. Always put air fresheners in the refurbs. Everybody seems to like it. And now we can get on the motor itself and to do the motor itself we have guess what more screws to remove there's one two three and still on three there we And four. Then you simply separate the two parts. That part is all as one, there's nothing more you can do with that. We need to card the screws up as motor housing. One, two, three, four. There is a how-to guide on the Manchester Vax forum about taking a motor down, taking a motor down, taking a motor apart, or even taking the machine apart to change the motor. But I'll be honest, it's quite rare that 25 motors go. I've certainly never seen one. I'm sure they do, but it's quite rare. So you need to remove the wires. And you need to grab it a little bit and just pull it back and it will pop the little rubber grommet out and you can then remove the big, well not the big, the fan case seal and the motor case. There is a rubber seal that sits in there, that's what seals it onto the chassis. Oh, but we have really out of this box. Let's some of the bolts and stuff out. And now we can see the motor, it is a Panasonic unit. I think it's the same as in the DC-39 as well. I'm sure we work that out. 1,330 watts. It's very good. I'll be honest. You probably can't, I probably can't let you see it because of the angle, but the armature is very clean. And there's basically nothing you can do to this but I'll pop it to one side. So, oh look, uh oh. I just noticed that the cyclone release clip has fallen out of the chassis. Does that mean this is broken? No. Nah. Phew, these are spring though. Let's quickly nick it spring from here. There we go. Right, so brief interlude, so motor apart, we can now move on to the brush roll housing, the Achilles heel of the DC-25, thanks to horrible brush roll motors. First you need to get a Phillips screwdriver because this is the only crosshead screw on the entire machine it holds this little back corner wheel on. There we go. There's the back wheel. Looking really good. <laughs> the rest are all bog standard torques, but first we need to remove the end cap and there's a lovely piece of plastic there 
this one has a little chip out of it but I've seen that on a quite a few of them but it doesn't seem to affect them at all here is the brush roll not in too bad condition there's a fair bit of string and hair and lint around it although compared to many that I've seen it's not too bad at all my sister-in-law is obviously quite careful there's some rubber there bouncy bouncy just pick all this up if it's really bad get a knife and cut it I've seen some very hairy brush rolls in my time as I'm sure most other repairers have there we go look that's all that needed that is actually melted hair plastic whatever as is that actually on there so I'll pop that there and now we need to undo all of the screws that hold the base plates on oh look there's a bit of twig there that's nice isn't it so one two three still three four It'd be interesting to see actually how this has fared because these are notorious for cocking up the crap and that's one of the things I reckon that kills the motor the motor itself doesn't help itself because the Johnston spec sheet for the motor gives it a 60 hour run time 60 hours that's not huge I mean I suppose if you really vacuum for half an hour every two weeks it's a fair lifespan but 25s I mean, they're coming up to 10 years old now for the eldest ones apparently they stopped making them in 2012 officially but apparently flogged them off painted grey it's a very basic the bottom of the line units alongside the 40 a lot of these are coming up for 60 hours now the motors are failing this one I think hadn't actually checked it it's okay doesn't seem burnt out you can normally tell because you can just see the armature anyway I digress cap off then you need to remove this belt simply lever it very gently although it's quite thick it's made of the same stuff as a car cam belt I think the car cam belts rarely go normally something else goes and takes it out on my car on the Zantia the Orcs belt snapped and made sweet love to the cam belt and stripped itself off a 14 once you've taken that off the base plate lifts up because it's only really being held in by that part there so here is a DC 25 base plate in all of its filthy internal glory you can if you're being super efficient although you need a T10 unscrew the brush roll cog like so but I wouldn't remove this cog and this is doing what a lot of them do and it will need a spot of glue I don't know if you can see but it's cracking there and you can sort of see it on the outside it's nothing a little dribble of glue won't fix at the minute anyway but if it gets too bad you'll need a new base plate like I say it's a Achilles heel 25 is this scrape off all the chunky bits if you wish I rarely bother removing the seals I'll be honest they're generally okay I just pop the whole lot in there and get the same later. I quickly need to card up some screws. Base plate. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Ooh, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you haven't really got to care where the Phillips one goes on here as long as you know that. Well, it could go anywhere, really. Obviously, it lives in the back corner. 
but it is the same size and thread and pitch of screw. I presume Dyson must have thought that the rear wheel might wear out faster, although I've never seen it. And so put a Phillips screw on it because most people are probably more likely to have a Phillips screw. Now we can see the brush roll motor. And to remove the brush roll motor, you need to flick out, there's a tab there. And all I do is get the screwdriver behind it, lift it up, and the motor comes out along with its spring. This obviously, this takes out any bounce from when you're using it with the brush roll. This bit of plastic here lifts out. That bit falls off. And then you take the whole thing and you use it to pull the PCB out. Now that's not too bad. There's a chunk of fluff there. Still there. And there we have, it's covered in carbon dust. But there's our little Johnston brush for our motor. These are getting, these are, you can buy them new, I'll be honest, but they're quite expensive. And it is cheaper, I found, to just replace the entire brush for. Because eBay, you can get them on eBay. Brand new, genuine Dyson for at the time of making this video about 35 squids. So I'll be honest, if we're not just refurbishing, I would just recommend buying an entire new head. But we're refurbishing, so I don't think we need to. Here is the clear part, which looks as manky as a used Dyson does, and the bumper, which simply unclips, comes off. We need. Uh, brush roll cog and that's the brush roll strips not a great deal to it we'll put a line under there there we are so far last but by no means least is the cyclone and you start by removing the bin like that oh look at that by bagless they're cleaner no they're flipping not buy nice bags cleaner to move the flap on the bin bear hug it i can't oh i've angled my camera down bear hug it under your arm squeeze and pull quite sharply and that will remove the flap and pull the rubber seal out like so and you can if you're being ultra super super anal about the whole thing and I'm only going to I, I don't always recommend doing this because it can be a bit of a sod and you may well break the cyclone which is why I'm only doing this I'm not even going to attempt it. You can remove that, but I'll be honest, you don't need to. It should just it flick out there first, and then pull out. You don't need to do it. There's no point. Any grip behind it will wash away. Now, the next thing I do... Anyway, it's only been nine months since I've refurbished this, to this standard. I'm only doing it this much now to film it. The first thing I always do is remove this cone. Pull alongside one of those clips and eventually it will snap out do that a few times the comb pops off as does his little seal and you'll have to scrape all the dirt from this little inner edge and it always gets clogged up here this is nine months worth see worse there we go Come on, last little bit. Like so. The only reason I do that at first is that then the cyclone sits down. Otherwise, it will fall off and it makes this next bit much easier. Next thing to do is to remove the flap and just simply flick out one of the tabs and that comes off. There's three screws under here. These hold the changeover valve and the handle on. 
So we'll start with the, not the changeover valve, sorry, the release valve. So we'll start with the release valve first. These are the longest screws on the entire machine, I'm pretty confident. Now, as soon as you move the last one, and I'll show you this on camera, it will go ping. If you're really lucky, it'll fly across the room and hit something. So, handle. Again, you haven't got to bother noting down which is the back and which is the front because the back are significantly longer than the front. So, common sense. Sense should dictate. Here is the release valve. The spring goes in there, the rest of it goes there, and then all that leaves is one front screw. Here. And then you have to pull the filter removal tab out and the handle comes off. To remove this part, is simply a matter of putting your screwdriver here so that the blade goes well over the handle and just a short sharp crack and that comes off and there is a little spring that sits in there that gives the it helps the whole system bounce really with the top done we can move on to the main units there's one two three four five screws that need to be undone. One. It says. One. Keep going off camera, sorry about that. Two, three, four, and five five screws and the top will lift off and you can tip your screws out now another thing you probably will need this doesn't because I did replace it last time is a cyclone gasket these where you can see where they get a hell of a lot of abuse there's the other side they all look roughly like that when they're new luckily this one isn't too bad after nine months but again, Manchester Vax sell them incredibly cheaply. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, four three, ah, four, five. And that's the last screw. On the 25, should we count them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 32, 46, 8, 40, 2, 4, 6, 48 screws on a Dyson DC25. So after all that excitement, pull this off, which is the middle part of the bin release and unlike a 24 which has a horrifically fiddly spring this doesn't it's just got a nice normal spring now with that off grab and remove the bin gasket and this is one of those fiddly bits that i'll tell you how to do but it just involves a bit of patience you need to get your screwdriver and break this bead and it takes a bit of patience because you have to go around quite far to break it. But just take your time. One of the things that makes this job difficult, especially on one that hasn't been done before, is that the dirt welds the tips of the cyclone to this part here that we're trying to remove. I'm hoping this one won't be too bad, he says. Hopefully, and the plastic can take a fair bit of bending, so don't worry too much. And the worst you're going to do is just put a little stress mark in it. I'll be honest, no one's ever going to notice. Work your way around, and then eventually, off it cracks, and you can separate the two. 
There's the inside of the shroud. There's the inside of the cones. Then you can pick out the fluff. But I find a good soak and wash fixes it. And there we go. We have a DC-25 fully stripped down. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. I certainly enjoyed making it. I'm now going to sort of split that parts bucket into two and put them into soak for a few days the mouse I'm using to control my phone so I can hit pause and play and there we go so the whole thing is been washed dried polished and reassembled might fill the reassembly can't promise it though due to time reasons but ooh, we forgot this Let's pick the fluff out of this. Get your screwdriver. Pick out all the fluff. You get the idea. Pick and flick. Pick and flick. Pick and flick. And I won't film the whole thing because you're probably bored enough by now. This probably this will be going on for about an hour. But I hope this has helped you fix some common issues such as or learn how to get to common issues such as the brush roll motor the cyclone gaskets filters duff switches broken lo yoke looms duff motors broken chassis like this one has all common dc25 issues and all that can be fixed for a relatively cheap cost, like I said, that entire chassis, which if you weren't this fussy, it would just bolt straight on. You just have to assemble the whole machine back onto it. Cost me a tenner delivered, if that. So, never write off a DC-25. They are good machines. They just need a bit of love sometimes, as we all do. And on that happy note, I shall bid you goodbye and thank you for watching. Click.